have to get out of your house in a real, with no notice at all. You pick up this bag and you go. We have basic items in here that I think everybody needs. Let's say a flashlight, pens, pencils, things like that. But you've got to make this personal, a personal go bag for yourself. If you have medication, you put some medication in there. You put your prescription in there. Uh, maybe some important documents that you might need, social security numbers, phone numbers of people that you want to contact, maybe an extra battery for your phone, maybe an extra phone. So you, we have the basic items in here, but the key to this is make it, make it personal to you for what you need, what you think you would need. You have to leave your house and not maybe go back for a few hours or perhaps a day. A snack, maybe some of you have dietary restrictions, make sure you have a snack in there in case you're diabetic or something. You make sure you have it personalized for your own self. It's a great thing to have. Everyone should have one, not just for your own person, everyone should have one who lives in your apartment. If there's more people in the apartment, there should be a bank for each one. All right? I encourage you, and we're going to give that to everybody tonight. So thank you for coming out tonight. How many of you promised to stock up your uh, go back with all the additional things that you need? Thank you. And uh, when you've got it and there's an emergency, what are you going to do? You're going to take your go bag and go. 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 Perfect. So we'd like to now have uh, Christina from OEM give the uh, presentation. And thank you all for coming out tonight to learn how you can be uh, safe and prepared. And we'll take questions at the end of the event.
this kind of gets in detail here. Doctors, phone numbers, pharmacies. We'll have resources, we'll have pharmaceutical vans, we'll have Department of Health personnel who can help you with this. But you know, like anything, the more details you have, the more information, it'll expedite it and help you get what you need that much sooner. The next thing that uh, you know everyone knows um, is uh, transportation is really important. You know, if if walking comes in the worst case that it could to the city, we could face a, a, a bus, a public transportation shutdown again, like we did during Irene and Sandy. Um, so even though you know we're very dependent on our public transportation, we need other plans. We need a friend. We need a taxi service. So this is some information to put down here. Um, this the next page talks about special needs. Uh, so if people, this, this book is available in many different languages. There's 12 languages on the back. So, uh, you know, people can fill it out. If someone needs to fill it out in another language, we would want to try to work with them to also do it in English because the vast majority, you know, of, of people may need help from first responders or, or somebody who would be more comfortable in English. But people could write down some phrases here um, or something. You know, also if people use sign language, if people use a certain device. So that's what that page covers. Um, so the next page talks about evacuation. Basically, when there's an emergency, you do two things. You evacuate or leave, or you stay in place. Um, you know, examples of evacuation can be um, a fire, can be if you smell gas, um, if there's a certain, you know, a, a flood that comes up, if you're in a coastal storm zone, as many of you may be since we're so close to the river, and, uh, you know, you're asked to leave. So for evacuating, there's certain things. One thing we encourage people to have is a meeting place close to home and one outside of your neighborhood. Um, you know, a police precinct, a library, a firehouse, those are all good safe places. So if you, um, and say you live with your daughter and you guys can't get in touch with online or jam, but something's happening on your block, you know that you can meet at the library, you know that you can meet at the firehouse. We also encourage people to have a meeting place outside of your neighborhood in case something happens in the entire area and you can't get, you know, within 20, 30 blocks. Um, something down here is our hurricane zones. Um, there are six zones in the city. We started a new campaign last year because after Hurricane Sandy, we updated the hurricane evacuation zones. There's now six. If you don't know what zone you're in, you can call 311 or you can go online to our website and you can type in your address and it'll tell you what zone you're in. Um, but that, you know, with what we're facing right now is for our hurricane system season, which is six months a year, that's important to know. Um, another thing about evacuating is, you know, we'll open up shelters um, if something happens. It could be a fire where we have to open up a Red Cross shelter or something, or it could be something as large as Sandy, where we open up, um, you know, dozens of shelters across the city. Those are safe. Uh, those have the materials that you need, but those are concrete care. That's 300 people sleeping in a gym. Um, you know, that's eating Department of Education food or feeder meals or other types of things. It's not, you know, an optimal situation. Nobody wakes up and says, I hope, you know, I can go sleep in the city shelter tonight. Um, but they're vital that we have them. You know, our, our goal really is for everyone who can um, to stay with friends and family. So if, you know, if you have someone, if you have a relative, a friend, you know, you can do it mutually. Um, so here's step to put down information about uh, who the person is and their history. You know, some people tonight may be calling their emergency contacts and saying, look, if walking comes, can I stay with you for a few days? Um, the next thing is a go bag. The good news is for you that most of these things here, you already have, not the cash. The cash part is not the cash. <laughs> <laughs> that part is not checked off. Uh, but a lot of these other things, um, notepad and pen, flashlight, like the councilman and the pusher said, battery operated radio, um, you know, some of the, the other items, um, they're already in here. You can see uh, there's a radio, there's a mask, there's a whistle, um, you know, a, a personal care kit, some of those things. They're already in there, so you guys have a big head start, but you have to put in your own things. You know, you might want to put in a book, or you might want to put in, um, you know, a sweatshirt if you're always cold, especially if you go to city buildings and they're always cold. You know, so those kind of things. I would have, you know, I need my glasses as I get older, so I have a pair of glasses in mine. Um, like I said, I have four kids, and so I have to admit I have twins, so they're a two for one. They're two little boys, they have the same bag because everything I've done is two for one. Um, but the other ones, you know, they have different, I have a girl, I have a boy, they're different ages. I also have one for my dog. So if you have a dog, a cat, you know, we know that people don't want to leave without their animals. If um, service animals are always welcome anywhere. If we open up shelters, for a hurricane, um, we do allow pets, provided they're licensed, they have their shots, so you should have that information, you know, in a little bag for them. We'll have food and water and things, but you might want to have a toy or a treat or something, you know, it, it could be a smaller bag, it could be a bag inside your bag. 
but don't forget about your pet because I know, um, especially in a rush situation, it can be heartbreaking. You know, in the East Village, um, we spent time, we were able to reunite some cats with their owners, but when you're facing, you know, such a loss, having a part of your family like your pet can be really important. Uh, so obviously go through your uh, go back tonight and then, you know, make a pack with yourself that you're going to put in some of the things that you need that will help you. And again, make, filling out this book and putting that in there is a good step because you'll have your plan all in one place. You know, also try to put your bag in some place that you're going to remember, some place that's easy to get to. You don't want it under your bed, behind, like, you know, a bunch of boxes. You don't want it, um, you know, up in a crawl space that you can't get to. Um, you know, it needs to be in, in a place where you're going to remember, where you can get to it, where you can check the supplies periodically. Six months a year can go by really fast. And then you realize the batteries don't work. Um, you know, the food is expired. You spent the cash because the Chinese delivery guy can't even have money out. So you pull it out. So, I mean, everybody's human. Everybody, you know, lives in a tight space. So, but, you know, we tell people daylight savings time is coming up. Um, or the opposite, whatever the thing is in October. But we tell people when you're changing, when you're looking at your smoke alarm batteries, you're changing your box, take five minutes and look in your go bag. See if you need some updated food. See if your prescription um, you know, requirements have changed. All those kind of things to make sure it's up to date. Uh, there's also, like we said, you know, there's information here about um, special considerations. If you use um, life-sustaining equipment, if you use things like that. Um, the next piece is if you stay in your home, if there's something like a snowstorm or there's a hurricane but you're not in an evacuation storm, we ask people to shelter in place. That just means stay in your home uh, for longer probably than, than you might be. So you want to make sure you have these items also together, some canned food, a manual can opener so you can get it open, um, you know, some water. So, you know, kind of trying to put those things together in a manageable way and have them somewhere so you have the supplies. You know, a flashlight, a battery, um, powered radio, those things are really important. One thing we saw during Sandy is that, you know, technology can fail and all your numbers in your cell phone that now the Upper East Side, you know, for the most part, maintain power. Obviously, people south of 34th Street were not so lucky. Um, and so, you know, after a day or something, their cell phones ran out, those things. So, you know, remembering that you need these things for, um, for when you leave and also for when you stay. Uh, and then in the back are just a bunch of resources where you can learn more information if you have special special needs. Um, the only thing, other thing that I want to mention is Notify NYC. Um, hopefully people are familiar with this. This is the city's real-time emergency information program. We send it out. Uh, we just sent out information citywide about um, Hurricane Joaquin today. It's free. You can get it on a landline. You can have it come to your home phone. You can get it on a smartphone. You can get a text. If you follow Twitter, you can do it that way. There's lots of different ways. You can sign up for your zip phone or area. You can sign up for five or six across the city. So if uh, you know your cousin lives in Brooklyn, if you have a child that goes to school somewhere else, so uh, it's really worth taking a look. You can also call 311. They're registered. You can go online. But it, you know, at the very least, it gives you information about if there's subway disruptions, if the FDR is shut, um, if there's flooding issues, and then it can be all the way up to you know shelter in place or evacuate because we're facing the life of that situation. So I really encourage everyone to check out Notify. We also have um, American Sign Language videos for about 70 prescriptive messages, like when there's transportation disruptions, power outages, things like that. We'll send people links and make 